Olá a todos, boa tarde, espero que todos estejam bem. Bom, hoje temos mais um seminário do grupo, né, e o seminário vai ser dado pelo Gabriel Borders Mota. O Gabriel, ele é graduado em física aqui na Unesp, em Guaratinguetá, fez o mestrado e doutorado por aqui. Até recentemente ele estava num pós-doc na Espanha, e agora ele mudou para um novo instituto, e a apresentação dele tem a ver exatamente com essa nova tarefa que ele está que ele responsabilizado aí. E é um, um instituto de física espacial sueco. Então, é, em função disso, o pessoal lá do grupo dele pediu para ele fazer a apresentação em inglês, depois eles querem assistir, não sei se vai aparecer alguém agora, mas para ficar gravado, depois eles poderem assistir. Então, a apresentação vai ser em inglês. Então, por favor, Gabriel, fica à vontade. Okay, so... So, é, de, deixa eu só fazer a introdução em inglês, então, para todos, né? <risos> ok. É melhor, né? Bom, uh -huh. então, é, so, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody is, is ok. Uh, now we have the pleasure to have here one seminar of one person from our group, Gabriel Borderes Mota. He, is, he has a, a bachelor's degree in physics and master and PhD degrees also from, in physics from our institution, UNESP Guaratinguetá. Uh, he has been doing a postdoc position in Spain and now recently he moved to this uh, space, uh, Sweden, Swedish space, Sweden, uh, Swedish, Swedish space uh, physics institute. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he's going to, to make a presentation on uh, something that he's just starting to work on. So please. Okay, uh, so let me share the screen. Um, okay. Are you seeing my screen? Mm, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let me just see. Okay. So let me start. Uh, okay. So uh, let us start uh, uh, the presentation. Uh, as uh, Professor Otto mentioned, I'm I came from the, the house and uh, some people in the group uh, know me. And before starting the presentation, I would like to just mention uh, how my career is going on, some updates about me. Uh, so uh, I went out from Madrid, but where I am? Uh, I'm uh, in the north, in really north, even more in the north, okay? so. I'm living now in Kiruna that, uh, as you can see, is above the Arctic Circle. Uh, a very different place that we are, uh, we usually to, to, to live, <laughs> at, at least as Brazilian. And uh, with diff many different things. So the question after this is, why should I come to here? Uh, because of uh, the really uh, beautiful landscapes or maybe because of the uh, trekking paths that are amazing here too. Um, the different environment, the, the snow, the cold. I, li I like the winter. The, the, this is a, a point also. The different food and the, also the different nature that we have here. Or something uh, more par particular from, from this region that is... Aurora or Northern Lights, lights. Uh, that is something really, really, really amazing. And my work here actually is uh, related with this uh, very beautiful phenomenon. Uh, and uh, and to, to understand about this work, also we should understand about the project that this work is, is covered by. So, uh, there is a collaboration between the, the place that uh, is hosting me, uh, that is Swedish Institute of Space Physics, and uh, the Swedish Space Corporation. Uh, they, they are in a collaboration granted by uh, NRFP, that actually is a national grant uh, program uh, created to straight uh, uh, research collaboration on space technology, between business and uh, research centers like uh, university, like college, and like uh, institutes 
as the Swedish Institute of Space Physics. And uh, in this grant, uh, they they approved this this project that's Alice 4D Auto SSA, and I'm working in in this project. Alice 4D is the main tool uh, we can say like this that we will use. And my goal in the project uh, uh, is to uh, to uh, use this this tool or uh, Analyze how to use this this tool to space awareness, uh, like tracking satellites or meteors, uh, space objects. Okay, so more or less this is the the picture uh, of the the project. So let us start with the summary. So I will talk a little bit about Alice 4D, and then I will just uh, highlight some good information is about tracking of space objects to understand the problem that I'm working on. I will talk a little bit about noise that uh, uh, something also particular by the region that I'm, I'm working and uh, our, where our system is uh, hosted. And, uh, and then I will present the data analysis and pre preliminary results. And finally, I will present some final remarks. Actually, the goal of this presentation is more or less present the whole, how is the goal of this, this project. And also I, I would like to, 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 to present, and if you have any idea that appears, uh, they are very welcome uh, because we are more or less in a kind of a creative uh, goal here because we have a tool to, for something that we want to use for another thing. Um, okay, so Alice 4D. The Alice 4D is the, a system of cameras that were, de were developed to study the Aurora. So because of this is related with, uh, with Aurora, my, my, my work. Um, actually, this, this system has uh, some versions before, Alice and Alice 3D, and, the, and the has been improved along the years. So uh, this system has several, uh, some cameras in the region that I, I, I am, the Lapland of Sweden. And also sometimes uh, we have access also to some stations that are uh, in other countries. Uh, so there are these stations that it looks like a small house where we, we put a camera and this camera, uh, these cameras and this system has a base, baseline with these stations of about 50 kilometers. But just to have an idea about the, the distance in the map, if you see the yellow point that with K, that is Kiruna, and the green point that has the A letter, that is Abisko, the, this distance is about 100 kilometers. So more or less to have an idea about how spread are these, these stations. Okay, uh, the field of view of the cameras are between 50 and 60 degrees. Uh, more or less, they, they are pointing to triangulate a region at 80 kilometers of altitude. Again, for, for, for studying Aurora, they, they, we have uh, 17 filters, more or less. Maybe, yeah, the, the last uh, table that I saw if the filters are 17, but uh, maybe this can increase you. I don't know. Uh, and these filters uh, can be placed in a filter wheel uh, that has six spaces. So we have some, some modes of operation that can be changed for, for the analysis of our order. Uh, the CCD is a highlight sensitive and high resolution. Uh, and the timer resolution that was one well, is one of the less improvements on the, the system, a uh, very important one, now uh, can reach 25 images per second, okay? And the special, special resolution is this one that is in the, on the screen, okay? So I just uh, would like to, to highlight the, the stations that we will use, that is the A, in, uh, as I mentioned, Abisko, uh, K, that is Kiruna, S, that is Sikimotka, and the T that is churches, I, I, I still don't know how to pronounce some words in, in Sweden, so I'm, I'm sorry about this. 
And uh, okay, so our goal is to track in space objects. So there are some, some conditions for doing this. And the simplest one is uh, since they don't have a, a light, uh, they need to be illuminated by, by the sun. And uh, we should be in a region that is dark, more or less as uh, it seems the, the, the picture. Okay, so just using this, this idea, for example, we can analyze the time that to, uh, the period uh, that we have to see this kind of object because it's a, a very specific condition. Uh, so just to have an idea, I, 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 I simulate this. Um, well, I, I, okay, forget the percentage that is not exactly actually, is just, uh, I forget to, to multiply by, by 100 the, the numbers. So 0.5 is 50%, okay? So the top, uh, the top, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the top figure uh, is the the time the the part the part of the the, the year of a year that uh, each latitude can observe uh, the uh, object in the altitude that uh, is in the legend. Okay, uh, in Berto, we can see two uh, two conditions for one year. So it's the period for the day that it's possible to see. And uh, the left one is in Abisko and the right one is in the equator. Just to have an idea about the distribution of this during the, the year, okay? So first thing in the top, as you can see, we have more time to, to observe it, this kind of objects in higher at altitudes, uh, mainly for, for, for low altitudes, as you can see. Uh, that is really good because uh, satellites in lower altitudes also can uh, reach uh, uh, a very good uh, apparent magnitude. And, uh, and uh, just to have an idea also, uh, the ISS is, is uh, between this uh, 400 kilometers, 600 kilometers for altitude. And, uh, <clears throat> but the distribution, as you can see in the button, it's not... Uh, uh, yeah, really constant during the year, uh, uh, more or less because of the high uh, latitude also. Uh, the moment that we can sometimes see uh, these kind of objects for the all day uh, is exactly during the winter uh, that we are in, <laughs> in a kind of uh, eternal dark. <laughs> and uh, by, the, by, by the angle of the sun, also, uh, the, the high altitude can be illuminated. And uh, uh, there is a point that we can see nothing uh, between 250 days and 350 day, 300 days. Uh, that period, that uh, gap is exactly because uh, we are during, on the day, all the time. This is the midnight sun, or sun of midnight. OK, so. Talking a little bit about the noise. Uh, we have some noise that are very common, like uh, moo, uh, that is a noise for us. Uh, airport, because at least the, the Kiruna station is really close to the airport. Uh, but uh, a good point is that we just there are just uh, more or less two flights arriving and going during the day. Uh, we could we have the problem with the lights from the city. That could be not so worse because the city is just twenty thousand of people. But uh, there are some uh, again some particularities of the city that uh, makes this not being so uh, simple. Uh, for example, we have a, a hill here that is a ski station that has a really strong light and arrives in Kiruna also the the, the station of Kiruna and. Uh, the cars here use, use a lot of light, so it's not so simple to compute how this, this light can interfere in our system. We have also the problem with the weather and a lot of snow, and a very particular a noise that can be aurora, that uh, even being weak when we have the sun light, uh, during the night the, the, the emission is really strong and uh, 
meanwhile because uh, mainly because of the of uh, the system is prepared exactly to look to Aurora, uh, they are very strong in our filters. Okay, so let us move to some data that we already took and uh, some preliminary analysis that we have. We are seeing now uh, four uh, videos. Uh, if I don't know if it's possible to note, it's quite, quite, quite weak. Some signals that are moving to uh, points actually moving in each one of the stations. Okay, so this is one of the one day that we use uh, particular filters that were uh, the that are the better filters for uh, taking image of uh, space objects. And uh, this is the original image. So to work with this, we can also use some kind of filters. Uh, and this is something, this is one of the things that uh, I, uh, we have a solution, but we can improve a lot is the filter. We are using now one filter that removes the signals that are uh, more or less permanent. So we can remove uh, a lot of the starlight, the, the stars light, but to also we have a lot of noise that you can see by the original image, we have some kind of reflection on the, the camera lens that uh, creates a, a strong noise that even with our filters not being removed, okay? So it's a very simple filter, but it has a very good uh, results, but uh, well, we would like to improve this also. This is uh, something that we can prove. After applying this filter, uh, one of the ideas is to use it random transform. Uh, that the definition from, from Wikipedia is there just to have an idea. But uh, since we can sum the, the image uh, that we took, uh, more or less, you, you saw the video. That, let me explain better this. Uh, you saw the video. So these images are a compl uh, complete uh, one minute of uh, uh, image capturing, but uh, are. Our, 116 frames, more or less, just to have an idea. So, so we we work more with these images that are a kind of a 3D images. So we have several frames. These frames has a time exposure that we already consider, but while we also can sum this uh, uh, these images and have a, a image for one minute and filter like this. And uh, finally, we can have a trace of a satellite that can be used for uh, having the data to, uh, yeah, can be used this tracer to try orbit determination, yeah, to try to determine, to determine the orbit. So, uh, we have very good results with this. Also, the the results that I'm showing here and what were reported in the beginning of this uh, project were run with this random transform. That uh, the only problem is um, that is complicated to automatize because the noise uh, it it can create some some functions that uh, uh, don't uh, allow the, the function converge, okay? So if you can, uh, uh, you can note in the above image, uh, the left panel, that uh, the, the images stop more or less to have noise after, a little bit after 400, that this is in terms of, of pixels. This because uh, you, to to have this 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 got a result with the, with the with the the coordinate of these curves, we need to remove the the other part of the the image because the noise uh, interferes on the transformation. Okay, so now I will talk a little bit also about uh, the first idea that I have here to 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 work with these and try to skip off these problems. Uh, just to, I, I just need to highlight that 
one of the main goals of the project is automatize to the, the detection of this point, of this trace, of end of these objects. So uh, after having the filter, uh, passing the, the initial filter in the image, uh, my idea was more or less uh, work with the images, the frames of the images to find uh, some, some three-dimensional curves, okay? So I selected two frames and uh, um, connect all the points of, uh, all the points I mean more or less like uh, all the signals that are in the image. Um, and create several, uh, a cluster of curves. And uh, then I can try to, to use this, the, 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 these curves to, yeah, to rebuild these curves with the dots of the image. So I pass in the dimension of the time, uh, image by image, seeing what pixel, pixel or, or not pixel actually, a uh, signal are close to the curve that I'm, I got. And then I can select the curves that uh, has the appearance of um, our trace. The good point of this, uh, mainly compared with the random transform, is that we have the information about the time. Okay, so this curve is uh, more or less the trace that we have the image, but uh, uh, the Z dimension here should be the time evolution. That is very good because since we have the, the trace, the position of the trace and uh, the time, and uh, we, can, we can try to, to construct the, the, oh, the word for, I, I forget the word. Uh, we can try to construct the position and the velocity of the, of the points, okay? Mainly because since we have four uh, stations, in this case, but we can have also more. We can triangulate to find exactly the position of each point in that time. So as the these stations are synchronized, this is quite simple to do. Uh, the main problem will be the the the, the errors that we have uh, from this data. And uh, <clears throat> now, just to show uh, all the, the the image that we were analyzing in the previous report of this project, are these. Uh, they were taken in April 1st, 2020. Uh, and uh, these are just 10 minutes of image. So we can see two traces in the first image. That is the one that I show more figures before. Uh, we can see also a trace uh, in, in the other image that complains the minutes of uh, 50 minutes, uh, 7, 7 p.m. and uh, 50 minutes. Um, and we can see in the, well, the sequence is from left to, to right uh, above, okay? And uh, the third image, the fourth image, and the fifth, fifth, fifth image is uh, a sequence of the same object that is passing there. And we also have other traces, as you can see in the other minutes. So more or less, we have 10 minutes here and 10, uh, not, is, no, 11. We have 11 minutes, 11 figures here, okay? So we could, uh, with these images, we could uh, identify these objects that pass there. Actually, one of the objects, uh, uh, the match was not really good. Uh, it's something that we should understand. This is, is a debris, this uh, throws the delta one. Uh, but the other object in the first figure that was the crossing, the two objects crossing, the other object was, has a very good match uh, that has a part of a Japanese rocket. Um, the object that appears in the, the, the time is 7 p.m. 50 minutes um, was not identified. And that object that appears in three images is uh, this rocket body. As you can see, we can see a lot of a rocket body uh, that uh, more or less is uh, also a good information because uh, one of the, uh, the, the goal is exactly to, <clears throat> to, uh, 
to see these debris, okay? So, just some final remarks. Next step is to automate, automate the process of finding traces of an object, identifying and determine the orbit of these objects. More or less, we can do this, all this process, more or less not, uh, we can do this, this process, but uh, they, are not automat they are not automatic. And uh, this could be important because we have uh, 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 tons of, of data and uh, we aim to, to use the Alice 4D not just for, for studying Aurora, but uh, also for uh, giving information for space awareness. Uh, <clears throat> we want to identify other objects like meteors. We didn't uh, start to work with this yet, uh, but it's something to, to work. Um, we want to improve, the, as I mentioned, the filters to remove the background, to, in the idea of uh, having a better, uh, a clear data. Because for this case that I present, is, it seems that everything is working really well. But uh, as I mentioned, we have several noises and we need to discover a way to skip from this. Uh, we may expand the model to be applied in other data also, because uh, this is uh, related with who we can work here in the Institute. Uh, and we, we can estimate the impact of ALICE for, for the monitoring space objects for the space awareness. So this is also good. Uh, we could, uh, as, as I mentioned, the idea of using this uh, system to monitoring space objects could uh, improve, improve a lot of the, the knowledge of the, or the information about this. Uh, that is a huge problem for uh, space engineering nowadays. So <clears throat> more or less, as I mentioned, this is an overview of the project. Uh, the goal of the project is to use the, this system that was developed for Aurora image, uh, that is our Aurora image system. That was a system developed to study Aurora's we want to use it for uh, monitoring space objects. So we, we need to know how to uh, find space objects, tracking space objects, and determine their orbits, and maybe improve the information about the orbits and these things. So um, and. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm open for doubts and uh, mainly for suggestion. Every suggestion is very, very welcome. Is this, thank you. Okay, Gabriel, thanks very much for the presentation. As you said at the beginning, it's, it's, a, a, it's the idea of the project. It's just to, to open for, for the community to know the kind of work you are doing. It's, uh, let's say, somehow very different from what uh, we usually do here. But uh, we, we also have something similar in another sense. That is a project that uh, Daniela is carrying on with uh, Rafael Sfairi and myself on, on tracking uh, uh, meteors and uh, here using the, the Bramon net here in, in Brazil. So it, it's, it's very, very interesting to know that that uh, you are, you are working on that. So now now we are open for questions, comments. Anybody would like to make a question or a comment? Uh, you said that you identified some some objects, piece of rockets and so on. Uh, do you? How did you do that? Once you you have the trajectory, then you you search in a Exactly. When when we uh, with, uh, we have the, the trajectory, so we can uh, com compute the the orbital elements or the TLE, and then compare with the cat catalogs, and more or less uh, looking for the one that is uh, really close to 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 this uh, yeah to these conditions. 
also something that I was thinking to do, uh, but may, I, I don't know if this can be uh, useful because we have a, uh, a background with the stars. So we also could try to compute the apparent magnitude and try to investigate if the, the satellites or debris uh, information, we can reproduce the magnitude and compare the magnitude expected and the magnitude that we are seeing, the apparent magnitude. But for now, it's just uh, we are just comparing the trace and the estimation of the orbit with the orbit of the, the objects that are in the catalog. Okay. Uh, another thing is that uh, you said that these uh, uh, equipments were made for uh, imaging auroras and studying them. And I was wondering, as you remove the background, uh, how, how the aurora changes with time? I mean, if the aurora uh, keeps changing, uh, as you see what is moving in your, your images from one frame to another, uh, they do, they are, the auroras, do they not uh, interfere on that? Um, I think I didn't understand the uh, understood If you the have question. an aurora moving, an aurora moving in different yeah. frames, and so as you move from one frame to another, the, the, the pixels change the position. So the aurora moves. Yeah, well, for so, b b before uh, I don't know. this, this, this <laughs> question, I, I need to say that I'm not working exactly with Aurora. But as I, as I understand about the, 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 the system, they, they, as I mentioned, they, they, they are pointing to, in a way to, to, to see a volume in the space. So, so they, the way they, they are pointing, they can map um, the volume of a space. This is a, space. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then uh, the variation has uh, the variation of the aurora and everything can be seen uh, in a kind of a 3D, uh, a 3D model. Okay, okay. There's one, one question by, by Gil. So the work is all done by instruments collecting images available online, or you have to do some work uh, on the field? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? The work is done all by instruments collecting images available online. So you, you get that or you have to go out to, to, to the field to, to collect the images. No, no. Uh, well, the, the these images are in the, our system. Uh, actually, uh, the institute they they have a very <laughs> interesting political about this because more or less all the tools that we, we normally use, for example, in Google, they they keep in their our servers. So the images of these stations that are from us, they they are they are sent to the servers of uh, the institute. So we we download from there. So this this. In principle, these these images are not uh, available, uh, publicly available, um, and but uh, at least the 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 our sky cameras that they have in each station, it's possible to find in in, in our website. So, the, not the scientific data, but uh, as that video that I show in the the beginning of the presentation, that is a. Uh, our sky, uh, our sky camera showing the, the variation of the aurora. This is publicly. Okay. And he also congrats to this nice, interesting work. Okay, thank you. Okay. So anybody else, any other comments or questions? We're open for... No? So I think that's it, that's it. So thanks very much, Gabriel. So uh, I, I, we, are, we are looking forward to see further results. So as you move on, you, you are already invited to, to give other seminars uh, as you, 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 you have more advice in your project. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. So now we can, we can stop.